Welcome to MCPA TV. Today we have some really special guests with us. I have Tyler Dotrich with the Relief app. I have Kevin Provost with the Relief app as well, and a dear friend of mine, Dr. Larry Walker with the University of Mississippi. And we have been working for quite some time together to create a research program for medical cannabis patients and for the industry as well. And so we're really excited to bring this to you and to announce our collaborative agreement to work together to help our patients and to help the industry across the state of Mississippi. We really feel like this is um, a remarkable program that really could set Mississippi to be the stage to be the leader of medical cannabis research not only in Mississippi, but around the world. And so, Tyler, I'm going to start with you. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself and what your company does. Sure. See, so Tyler Dowtrick, I am the COO at More Better. And More Better, from like a 30,000 foot view, is a software data and research company. So, since 2016, we've been collecting real world data on the use and performance of a specific product based on specific symptoms for reasons that that product is used for. Uh, what you, how you introduced it earlier, one of our product is the, the Relief app. So the Relief app is a patented application. It's a free app in both iOS and Google Play Store, and it's the top rated app for a cannabis or CBD patient or consumer to track and improve their use of those cannabinoid-based products. So they'll actually go into the app, they'll track the product that they're using, where they purchased it from, specific symptoms that they're using it for, and then those outcomes that they've experienced more or less in real time from a severity increase or decrease, and then from like a feeling, side effects, and emotion standpoint. So what the app does for that person is generates personal reports and analytics to help them understand like what's working best for them so that they don't have to like review note after note after note of like handwritten journals. But what's interesting for our relationship is all of that data that's anonymous on the person side, but gets really specific into this product was used for this symptom and provided this effect, we can study that in a number of different ways, or Larry and team can study that in a number of different ways for different research projects. And just for perspective, that the Relief App data has allowed us to do 11 published studies to date. So the opportunity to get really specific into a state market and really focus on products in a specific state that are available in that state that are used for specific symptoms and conditions from patients across that state is exciting. Yes, it really, really is. And so, um, Kevin, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do with sure. Relief App. So, um, Kevin Provost, uh, president of Relief App. My focus for the last couple of years with the company has been focused a little bit more on the contract research side of the organization. As Tyler mentioned, the data that's being collected by the application and by the software can be used by researchers, for sure, um, but also companies who are looking to formulate their products for specific use cases, in beginning, it's oftentimes trial and error for them too. And it's very expensive to do double blind placebo controlled studies. And so we're big believers in observational data, being able to transition into quasi clinical study data, and then eventually clinical data. Um, and so, you know, the goal here in Mississippi is obviously empower patients with the information that they need to go out and purchase the right products. So they're not wasting a bunch of money at the dispensaries buying products that don't work for them. Second goal is to provide some of that data back to Larry and his team so they can study it and let us here in Mississippi know what's actually working for the patients. And then the third goal is for the healthcare professionals. who are making the recommendations to the patients to go out and get certified. How can they communicate better to their patient set 30, 60, 90 days after patients have been using cannabis? And what else should the doctors be on the lookout for in terms of either adverse events or what medicines the patient may no longer need to be using because of cannabis or maybe what other medicines they do need to be using because of cannabis? So um, that's more or less been my, my focus. And I think what we're able to do here as a group is going to really you know, expedite that in the state of Mississippi. Absolutely. I appreciate that. And Dr. Walker, tell me about what you do at the University of Mississippi and about the history that you have there and what all y'all plan to do. Thanks, Angie. Um, so I was a faculty member at Ole Miss for 41 years, going on 42 years now. Um, my training is in pharmacy and pharmacology. Most of my career at Ole Miss was 
centered around research on natural products, plant-derived natural products, of which cannabis was a major one that we spent a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of research effort on. So uh, many people know us because of our history of federal contracting with NIDA to uh, produce marijuana for research. Um, out of that effort, which has been going on for about 50 years, actually, but way before my time at Ole Miss, out of that effort, a lot of uh, understanding about the plant, about growing it, about the chemistry that's there, about effects that it might have, good effects, bad effects in some cases that need to be understood better, to learn about um, the, the uh, impact of composition of the plant material and the effects that you might see. Uh, many people are aware that, that uh, there are more than 100 cannabinoids, 120 or so, maybe more cannabinoids uh, in cannabis. And uh, we know a, a lot about a couple of them, but a lot of them we don't know much about. And some of them seem to have, if you're able to, to uh, purify them and study them, some of them seem to have interesting Effects. And so we're trying to uh, push that frontier a little bit and try to understand better how cannabis might be used in, in the medical program effectively and safely. And, you know, the role of the Mississippi Cannabis Patients Alliance in this is that, you know, we want to encourage our patients to come on board and to use the relief app and input your data so that we know and can learn more about how your products are working for your debilitating medical condition because it's so important that we have uh, anonymously collected data that will show the efficacy of the products and in, in, in time it will we will be able to prove like that certain strains are working better for certain conditions. And that will also save our patients a lot of time and money. Because I know for me and our personal journey with our son, Austin, when he went to Colorado, it took us, you know, months and months and spending a lot of money and trying to find out what worked better for his medical conditions. And so, you know, that's what, you know, our overall goal is just you know, to help our patients. We want you to save money, but we want, you know, to be able to prove, you know, to the world that this is real medicine, that it does really work to help our patients overall. And something else that we'll be able to do is to collect data that can be used with the Department of Health and with our legislators and to, um, you know, to prove to them and the Board of Medical Licensure and Board of Health that, you know, this is working for thousands of patients across the state and, uh, and it's being properly analyzed by the University of Mississippi. So we encourage everybody to participate in this and to come on board and to help us with that.